Hello and welcome to a quick tabletop bellhop board game bag check where I am going to check out this little package. This is the Aventuria promo pack number one. I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. And of course, the question is, what do you get in this small pack of cards? So what I have here is the Aventuria promo pack number one from Ulysses Spiels um, in Germany and released in North America from Studio 2 Publishing. Now, this is a pack of cards for the Aventuria Adventure Card Game, which is one of my absolute favorite adventure card games, one of my favorite fantasy card games set in the world of the Dark Eye. So I'm about to crack this open for the first time. I have not seen this before. And what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to tilt the camera down for this. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to show off each card one by one. And you can discover these same time as I am. So if you're an Aventuria fan, I am sure you want to know what comes in this pack. So you start with a promo pack card that just shows you the cards that are in it. Don't care. Next, you have the Dark Eye. So this is an artifact based on the name of the game. So what the Dark Eye says is when you roll a one on the D20 for an attacker skill check, you draw two cards instead of one card from the discard pile. And when you roll a one, you don't have to discard. That is a huge card. That is a really cool card especially if your dice are hot or cold and you tend to roll ones or twenties a lot. I really like this card. Note, this card is also available in the Aventuria Arsenal of Heroes expansion. Next, you have the Alluring Bait card, which I'll show off here quickly, but then I'm going to steal it to read it. So in a duel, your opponent may only exhaust this card when an opponent uses fate. Sorry, you may. You may only exhaust this card when an opponent uses fate. So if they use a fate, you can tip it and the opponent loses a health. In an adventure, you may only exhaust this card when an opponent rolls one to five. Tap it and the opponent loses one. Now I gotta say, and I know some people when they're playing duel have made some very fate heavy decks that might be useful against that. But I gotta say this one sounds really good to me for a adventure game. This is something I put in my deck playing co-op because every time the opponent rolls one to five doing that one damage, that ignores defense, could be the key to taking out a lieutenant or some other henchman. Dig this card. I don't know if I drafted it in my deck or not. Um, it counts as equipment, so it is an equipment card. The last one was also equipment. Then we have something, oh, this is, oh, it's a henchman. That's awesome. Okay, I had no clue. I thought these were all gonna be adventure cards, so the next one's actually a henchman card, and it looks really cool because it's an orc family. It is a family of orcs with a five health and something special on the D20. So what these say is they're an orc swarm. So it's a swarm of orcs. So it follows the swarm rules. Um, you're gonna put four counters on it. It's gonna take as many actions that are left on it. It either attacks the starting hero for 2D6, a random hero for 1D6, or the orcs say something orcish, which is something I do appreciate the humor on many of these cards. I dig this, that's going right into my henchman deck for every game I play going forward. Then finally, we have an Advantage card, Stranglehold. So quick look at it here. And what this says is, choose an opponent. She loses one health for every Endurance card she plays. The opponent may forfeit her turn, its regular attack, for an attack roll to discard this card. Wow, so that stays in play, and every time they play Endurance, they take one damage. That seems like a huge dual card. And to get rid of it, they have to give up an attack. In an adventure, choose a henchman. For every time it rolls 1 to 20, or sorry, 11 to 20, lose 1 health. That seems pretty good, too. This one, though, seems like a dueling card to me. That sounds like a really good dueling card to me. Every time you put in endurance, take taking damage. You get this in your starting hand, that's going to give you a huge advantage at the beginning of a duel. And that's it. That is everything you get in promo pack number one for Aventuria. Again, we'll toss this down here for a second. So promo pack number one from Adventuria, four new cards for your Adventuria adventure card game. I had to say this looks sweet. Um, one of these cards I already had, but know what's cool is that means now more people could use it with deck building. As you got while you were watching the video, if you watched the whole thing, I was shocked to find a henchman and a very cool henchman. We have a, a, a swarm of orcs, an orc family. I dig that. The other cards look great. Um, one seems better for adventure play. One seems better for dueling play. And another one seems good for both. So a really good balance. I'm impressed. If you can find yourself a copy of promo pack number one and you play Aventuria, just get it. Pick it up. Now on the top of each of these promo packs is always a card that just shows the cards that are inside. But we're not going to worry about that much because I've got the cards here. 
So the first thing we have is Improvised Weapon is the first card. It is a tap to attack for 1d6. It is a melee attack, a weapon. I got to say overall, meh. But if you play a magic user character or someone that doesn't have a melee basic attack, this is a great way to throw in a second attack every turn. So if you're playing anyone that has a base ranged attack or a base um, magic attack, I can really see putting this into your deck, and it is the lowest level weapon. So most people should have room in their decks for this card. I gotta say this looks great, not for the character I usually play, which is the Dwarven Blacksmith, but overall a very cool card. Next we have Lock Picking. This one's interesting. Look at another character's endurance cards. Play one of those cards as if it were in your hand with the usual rules. It says zero. I don't quite get it. If you're gonna you, you look at another person in here, endurance cards, play one of those cards as if it were in your hand. I have to assume you can only play um, red cards that way. Like you're not gonna be able to take someone's weapon for zero cost, that seems overpowered. This one I got almost have to look up an FAQ. I'm gonna guess this is to use on an opponent's, um, whatever you call them, instant card. You can go through their endurance, find an instant card and play it. That, that, that seems huge. So that's a talent, may have an FAQ on that. Then we have another instant card. This one is an advantage card. You and your opponent, you and an opponent of your choice exhaust all endurance cards. Roll 2d6. If you and your opponent are each healed a number of hearts equal to the one of the dice, you choose which die is used for each hero. So you, you tap everyone's endurance, and then you both get healed. But you get to pick which die. You're going to roll two dice. Someone's going to heal so much, so much for the other. Now note that is a dual ability. In an adventure, exhaust all your endurance and heal yourself D6. That seems useful. I could see throwing that in a number of different cards. Um, there is a bit of a almost adult content on there. Nothing showing there, but it's a, definitely a little suggestive. And I'm assuming that is a known character from the Dark Eye universe. Then finally, we have Drunken Revelry. Every time an opponent gains endurance due to an action card, you may draw one card. That's cool. In an adventure, for every opponent action that heals one or more opponents, you can draw a card. I dig that. I dig that a lot. So this is one where if, if you have an opponent you're playing against who does a lot of stuff to gain endurance while using their cards, you can use this to, to draw cards yourself. And then in an adventure, every time an opponent heals. So again, depending on what adventure you're on, that could be hugely powerful. Now, I will say I'm a little disappointed that these were all um, normal cards, no henchmen. The last the promo pack one had a henchman in it that made me really happy. This just has four cards. You've got two instant cards, a free action card, and a weapon card. All right, so as with all of these, you do get a little intro pack that shows you what the cards you are you're going to get in, and then you get four cards. So the first thing we have are Brass Knuckles. They are an attack for 1d6 plus 1. If a game effect compels you to discard one of your hand cards, you can instead discard your Brass Knuckles. So they are a green weapon for when using deck building, but they cost nothing to put into play. And I gotta say, a D6 plus one damage on a melee attack, this seems like a great card to toss in for a non-melee damage. So if you do not have, if you start with a basic ranged attack or a basic melee or magic attack, you might want to throw in some brass knuckles, which I think is kind of funny because picturing a wizard walking around with a pair of brass knuckles on them, I find rather amusing. I don't know if I'd toss this into any type of attacker deck. Um, this does seem pretty solid though, overall, though it does cost one endurance to use. So again, if you already had a melee basic attack of one, having to pay one endurance to do plus one damage to me is not worth it. But in a non-melee character's deck, this sounds cool. Though if you are dueling with someone who uses some kind of deck depletion that causes you to discard all the time, and you know that, you might want to keep this in your deck. Next, we have a talent, Mimicry. All of your attack rolls against animals are decreased by two. All right, so my wife and I are currently playing through Forest of No Return, and I am really thinking I'm going to take this two-cost card and throw it in my deck, and then I notice this very important word right there. That's a reward card. So we have a reward card. Oh, this is a reward card too. Oh, this is, all right. So I don't get to just put this in my deck. That's even neater. So these brass knuckles, I totally missed it, are a reward card. So they're gonna go on my reward deck and hopefully if I find them, if someone who plays a non meal character finds them, they can throw it in. And then also, this is fantastic. I want this while playing Forest of No Return. You fight a lot of animals in that adventure. 
I want to get this reward. And it ends up the next one's also a reward. It's a love potion. Discard this card if a henchman with the keyword human executes an attack with an action roll. You designate a target, you could attack as the new target. So you got kind of a charm person here. Um, it is four cost, but it stays in play. No, because you discard it. So you got one use, redirect a henchman against someone else. Kind of neat. Um, obviously only used because of rewards. It's only going to be used in um, cooperative play. Then last week, we have a piece of equipment that is the dragon orb. At the start of your turn, roll a d6. On a four to six, the dragon cub hatches and now has an, a permanent effect. Tap an opponent of your choice loses two. Okay, that's awesome. That is a neat card. So you have a dragon egg. It costs two to put into play and eventually it hacks and you can use it to hit opponents for two damage. I really dig this card and that can be put in any deck. So there you go. There you got four new cards for the Aventuria adventure card game. Totally missed it at first, but three of these are rewards. So three new rewards to throw into your reward deck when playing cooperative. Now for dueling players, you may not need this expansion much because you're not getting, sorry, I got the wrong ones. Those are, sorry, there, there is the treasure cards, the reward cards. You may not need this deck as much as this bonus because all you're gonna get out of is a dragon orb. If you play cooperative, three great treasures to add to your deck right there. So four cards in the Aventuria promo pack number three. So what I have here in my hand is the Ship of Stone promo pack for the Aventuria Adventure card game, which is um, kind of oddly an expansion that's an expansion for an expansion. So for this to be useful to you, you do need to own Aventuria Ship of Stone. Now, the thing is for Ship of Stone to be useful to you, you need to own Forest of No Return and Ship of Lost Souls. Yeah, I know it's a little confusing. This is an expansion that ties together two previous expansions. And this that I'm opening right now is a promo pack for that expansion for the expansion. Got all that? All right, so what I'm looking at here are four new cards for the Adventure Adventure card game, specifically as promos for the Ship of Stone pack. So what I'm gonna do is crack these cards open and share them with you. I am loving the Adventure card game. I am really looking forward to what we get in this box. So this just notes, we provide you with two hero cards and talent cards. So what we have is a new Blessed One of Perrine. So Blessed One of Perrine is the character who comes in Forest of Shadows. Well, this is a gender swapped version. So you have a female presenting version of the Blessed One of Perrine. And along with that, the talent card for the Blessed One of Perrine. And then we have the Thorwallian Warrior Again, gender swap. So this is the character that comes in Ship of Lost Souls, who is female presenting, replaced with a male version. With, again, their talent card. I personally dig this. I love gender swapping in games. Please present me with a character that presents as male or female, and I can swap between it. Diversity matters. Representation is important. And I appreciate Ulysses Spiel adding this to Aventuria. Now, if you pick up the Wheel of Life expansion as well, you will also get wheels for these. So health tracking wheels and uh, the tokens, character tokens for these new gender swap characters. So this is a little tiny expansion for an expansion that ties together two expansions that now let you play two of the characters as the opposite gender, at least presenting as the opposite gender. Something I do appreciate. Dig this. Good work, Ulysses Spiel, on adding more diversity to your game. Thank you. Now, I am Motusino, Tabletop Bellhop, all over the internet, Tabletop Bellhop, one word. We have a webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find some awesome gaming content, including reviews, news, and answers to your game and game night questions. We want to be a Dear Abby for gamers, and for that to work, we need people to send us questions. You can send your gaming or game night questions to mo at tabletopbellhop.com, or head over to the webpage, click on Ask the Bellhop. Questions at tabletopbellhop.com also works. Either way, we're good. Thank you for joining me tonight to check out these new cards for the Adventuria Adventure card game, which we love. Good night and game on.